Okay, as uh, people join, uh, welcome everyone to our uh, second session of the Choose Life uh, series. And today, our topic is uh, cultivating a life of prayer. Uh, and I invite uh, our pastor, Reverend Selvan Jairaj, uh, for, uh, uh, for, to lead us in prayer. Over to you, pastor. Thank you, Sam. Good evening, everyone. We welcome you on behalf of BMC, WMC. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And of course, it is a great privilege that God has given to us to sit together and learn in the feet of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And today, of course, uh, as uh, Dr. Philip Cherian, who is known to us, who was the former camp uh, speaker. And today, as he's going to bring out the truth, let us pray that the Lord will minister to our hearts. As God said, I, will, I have said before you the blessing and curse and life and death. You choose life so that you and your offspring shall live. So let's pray that the Lord will minister to each one's heart tonight. And uh, let's prayerfully ask the Lord to speak through his servant. Shall we look to God in prayer? Our loving God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this wonderful time where we can come and pray your kingdom come and your will be done on earth. So Lord, as you have put all of us together in unison to pray like this, and yes, it is uh, effort of our prayer together. So Lord, as the church prays, there is power. So must we pray that even tonight as we are going to meditate and share the thoughts from your servant, Lord, as he's going to deliberate upon this cultivating uh, life of prayer in our lives, we pray that you would speak to us. Take control of this program till the end and from the beginning till the end, let the Holy Spirit minister. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful platform and opportunity that you have given to us to study your word. Be with us and guide us for we ask these things in Jesus' blessed name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Sam. Over to you. Thank you, Pastor. Now, um, our speaker today is uh, Mr. Philip Cherin, who is the founder and director of uh, Formations, a Christian organization. Uh, he uh, by, is an engineer by qualification, worked with uh, LNT for a few years, and then uh, came into uh, full-time uh, ministry. And uh, since then, he started Formations and is leading that now. Uh, I got, I had a chance to work uh, for about uh, 10 to uh, 10 days to two weeks uh, with uh, uh, informations as a volunteer nearly eight years ago and uh, I was really uh, amazed by uh, how uh, things were done and uh, yeah I, usually there's often a, 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 a dichotomy you know people that are, I see two kinds of people of course this is in the extremes and and, and um, uh, making it a bit simplistic, but there are people, there are the types of people who uh, focus a lot on planning, planning and doing things. And then there's the other type who uh, say that, oh, but it's all prayer. We, um, it's not, it's not so much the planning meetings, it's the prayer meetings that matter. And uh, when I went uh, to uh, and worked uh, at formations, what I saw was uh, both uh, uh, an organization uh, which uh, planned and did things. But at the same time, it gave a lot of importance to prayer as well. I still remember uh, each of us as uh, as volunteers and those working in the organization also, uh, as part of our work, uh, we were uh, uh, required to pray for an hour each day uh, for the ministry, for the organization, and uh, for God to do his will through us. Uh, so uh, I still remember that those times very fondly. And uh, 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 of course, uh, Philip Chen Uncle is new to uh, many of us. He's been uh, at our camps and uh, spoken at our church many times. So uh, a familiar face, and uh, I'm sure it, uh, it would be a blessing uh, today to hear from him. Uh, just a quick point about how we're going to do things today. We'll have about we'll have uh, Uncle speak for about 45 minutes or so. Uh, during that time, you can start uh, typing in your questions. So I will put in a link. And the chat box uh, should have reached you by now. It's also there in the WhatsApp group. And you can use that link 
to send in your questions. You can start doing it right away. Some people have already sent in questions. You can do so. The link will be active throughout. And uh, after the session, uh, Kumar Singh uncle and Priyanka auntie will come and moderate a time of uh, Q&A for us. Uh, so that's about the Q&A session that will follow uh, the session today. Uh, also, as a church, we have multiple platforms to uh, get involved in prayer. Uh, one such platform is every weekday at 9 p.m. We're having uh, 20 minutes of a time of prayer online where we're praying for the needs of our nation, the needs of our church, and uh, also some personal prayer requests. And uh, WMC also has a time of fasting and, and praying every uh, Friday at 9.30. So there are multiple avenues to, you know, not just hear about prayer, but actually pray. So uh, if you are not yet a uh, part of that, I would encourage you to uh, get involved with that. All right. Uh, without uh, taking much more uh, time, uh, I'll, let me hand over this time to uh, uh, Philip Uncle. Uncle, over to you. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, and uh, we'll wait to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, glad to be with all of you uh, once more. And um, it's a joy for me to uh, share and just to see Sam after such a long time. It's a personal joy for me also. And uh, I, I thank God for the fact that uh, we could meet like this. And it's wonderful. I, actually, I lost track of where he was for a period of time. But nice to see and hear from him today. Um, just let's begin with a word of prayer before I say anything more. Father, we want to thank you and praise you for this time. I have nothing to share uh, about prayer, which perhaps my brothers and sisters do not know. But I'm sure, Lord, that there is something about your heart that you want to put across to us this evening. And uh, I pray, oh God, that I will be a, uh, the right person, Lord, to be able to translate whatever you have to, you want to tell through the words that I use. And I pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit of God will minister in a very powerful way as a result. We thank you for this forum and for this time. And uh, we pray for great concentration as we hear on these matters. And may we walk away from this thing with um, uh, a sense of, let me do it. I ask you, Father, to help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, um, over a long period of time, one of my uh, desires and dreams has been to uh, be able to take this small life of of mine, uh, how many hours the Lord gives, and uh, not to have any regret about it when I go to heaven. That is something that um, I, I, or don't, I don't want to have. Uh, when I look back at my life, uh, I was good at biology and I wanted to become a doctor, uh, but because my dad was an engineer and uh, he ha had aspirations about his son becoming an engineer, and uh, though I got admission for agriculture and things like that, but since medicine was the thing that I should have done, and since I did not get uh, into medicine after nine attempts, uh, and when I say nine attempts, means I that year I wrote many entrance examinations across India. Um, so ultimately, I took engineering, which really was not my flavor or my cup of tea. Um, but anyway, I took it. And I struggled during my course. Uh, of course, I excelled later on and rose to very good positions in the industry. But And I love the industry. There is no problem with that. But... I feel I would have contributed. And so in that sense, when I look back, I wonder why somebody didn't tell me about attempting for some higher thing like an IAS or something else. Maybe, I don't know, I, I could have cracked it or not. I do not know I, because I never tried. So I leave that part of my life with some level of regret. However, God in his mercy turned all of that into advantage. And today I'm able to contribute in all those areas also. But I think that will not be the possibility when we go to heaven because that will be a chance lost. Um, and I don't want to go to heaven with any regrets in my mind. And to make that happen, I think prayer becomes a very important aspect of a person's life. And so I want to talk a little bit on that. So let me uh, share my screen and straight away get into the meat of what I have to say. And uh, then maybe we will look at it. Yeah, I don't know where I am. So yeah, yeah this is my first. Yeah. Okay, fine. So can you see my screen? All of you? Yes, sir. So, right. so prayer. So this was the practical challenges in following a systematic life of prayer is what I was going to do with all of you. And uh, so some of the thoughts that I have are here. Um, let me just uh, uh, put them together for you now. Okay. <clears throat> so challenges. Um, 
I say that uh, there is no challenge in having a systematic life of prayer if the axioms of life are right. In what, what do I mean by that? If the general rule of life is if something is important, we will do it. That is how all people are. So if there is no systematic prayer life in a person's life, it just means that that is not important. That's how I see it. Okay. There are a lot of other systematic things we do without forgetting. For example, I'm not, I'm yet to see a father who has forgotten to pick up his son from school at the right time. I'm yet to see. There may, there may be fathers like that or mothers like that, but I am not yet seen anyone like that. I've always seen fathers and mothers, especially when the children are small, they'll reach always school on time and they are very systematic about it or they drop the children off, in fact, ahead of time. So, and I think nobody, you have to teach somebody in front of an ICU to pray because the person who is inside is somebody whom they love. So there is no need to teach them to pray because they will pray. So if somebody is not having a systematic life of prayer, I will not uh, today spend more time teaching how tricks and tips of how to pray. But I would rather ask them the fundamental question as to whether you see, do you see the point behind this whole thing? So that's how I look at it myself and at, at others, others also. And so it's the most intelligent option we have in our hand. Let me put it that way. And uh, let me give you some few reasons why I think so. My experience in our organization is when Samuel was telling about the um, uh, prayer life of the organization. I will talk a minute uh, in a minute about that. But my personal prayer life, what I have done here when I come to an, on a, an average working days, uh, our work time starts at 9.30, but I reach the office by 8. So that, that gives me about an hour and a half before the everybody comes uh, because I'm leading the organization. I would like to spend uh, time uh, in the office and the office is a place where nobody is there at that time. So I can cry out, I can shout, I can dance, I can do what I like and I can pray. So uh, that's how at least I capture that bit of time. Uh, otherwise, the day is madly busy and uh, we work late nights. So there is no chance otherwise. So that's how I try to figure that this doesn't happen always. But uh, this is my routine on a working day. This is how I do it. In the corporate life of the, of the office, um, we had, as Samuel was saying, about giving people an hour to pray. But we found out that the time was given to them. Some of them would not do it. Uh, some of them would do it, but not effectively. So what we do now is we gather together at one period of time in the afternoon every day and pray. And those are well uh, uh, calibrated prayer requests. And for this meeting, we have, it's a system of prayer. So for this meeting, we have, we as an organization have prayed every day from the day I was called for this meeting. So there's a system in place to pray. That means every day, and there's another one meeting happening at the same time now, for which also we have been praying. So no meeting I will arrive without all of us having prayed for it throughout the week so that that uh, throughout till the time if it's if i know that this meeting is going to happen one year from today then we would have prayed so there's a system in place so basically that's how we look at prayer life in that sense future plans if you ask me i would say that i would like to pray more than i would like to preach and i would like to spend more and more time with god that's the future plans in my personal life so that's how i see it and um, and we are somebody who people who believe in working as very much said because without working sitting and praying alone the world is not going to change is my my take on it and so there has to be good work like nehemiah we should have brick in one hand sword in one hand so we need to have both at the same time so that's how we should be so systematic prayer life since i told you about the fact that it ha doesn't happen um, because of certain things we don't believe properly i just want to run through a few reasons for that number one is intimacy in and intensity with god when that is less than their systematic prayer life will not happen. This has nothing to do with your theological education or your not having it, nothing. It is just about intimacy and intensity with God. Uh, those who know God, those who are passionate about God, that's it. So that means the beautiful thing, unlike in any other domain, is that in the Christian world, the qualification of the person doesn't matter. It is his knowledge of God, which, which the Lord gives. Of course, other things are all helpful, but... Basically, without that, you cannot do anything else. I mean, yeah, I can have all the experience and everything, but if I don't have intimacy and intensity with God, then everything else will not work. So that's the number one. Secondly, spiritual goals. Your prayer life depends upon your spiritual goals. Thirdly, understanding what our resources can do. So if you know that what you have in your hand can really change the world, then uh, that's what's going to make you pray. Fourthly, knowing God's approach to prayers how he views prayers and how, how, what does he, what does God do with prayers? So that can either excite you or it can discourage you. So if your understanding about God is wrong, uh, and I've seen a lot of people's 
so prayer lives go for a six during this corona period of time because their understanding of god is wrong so when god does or doesn't answer prayer something happens to them uh, fifthly understanding satan and his work so if you don't know that also you will not pray so i i've just put this is just comp compilation from my experiences uh, i've seen these five things that really matter let me just go quickly one by one so that we can investigate them number one is intimacy and intensity in prayer okay you you may note down any questions on these things then we can talk okay intensity what is intensity uh, it is a sensitivity to the things of god now i have seen a number of people in my life who started out being very sensitive with god uh, earlier days in their spiritual walk they had great sen sensitivity to god's things um, take like nehemiah nehemiah was so sensitive to god that though he had a job everything took back seat in terms of his devotion at that point of time in fact he went to fasting and praying when certain things happened in the spiritual realm which was making his whole life to um, churn around him so um, so sensitivity to the things of god uh, made him cry uh, for the for his people and for the glory of god that was not there so intensity depends on those kind of things so we have to ask a good question to ourselves before we ask the question of prayer is it that do we have that kind of sensitivity to god to be able to hear about a ruin and to weep like a nehemiah you know and later on he passed that intensity to other people also so that also we see is a very amazing thing about uh, nehemiah that we see and uh, we read about the kind of intensity that uh, people like nehemiah ezra and had in one verse even when it came to the word of god for example it's it says like this uh, in in a passage um on the first day of the seventh month ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand he read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of men women and others who could understand and all the people listened attentively to the book of the law so you can see i mean if you were to read more than 15 minutes most churches i go i'll get a warning that brother you preach only 14 minutes if you do anything more than 14 minutes and if it's 15 minutes i will lose my job the pastor will sometimes tell me so you better preach only 14 minutes so here the intensity of god is so strong that they are there to uh, hear the word of god for a long long time yes so if you look at jesus we i find him as an in, as an example of intimacy with god jesus is the model of that intimacy with god you know and why is it so because in john 10:30 he says i and the father are one that means whatever was in the heart of god was in the heart of jesus and their thoughts were so united so definitely uh, we will talk about a li little bit more about that uh, his desire for us is all of them may be one father just as you are in me and i am in you so actually he sees us as the an extension of his relationship with the father where we also know what is in the heart of god because we also know the heart of jesus and uh, together in that sense we share the concerns of god in our heart and that really uh, makes us to pray work and do whatever else so the intimacy with god is something which is very important in understanding what god wants us to uh, believe and to think and central to all this intimacy was the fact that after prayer he would go and obey so it was not just pray and, and go and sleep again but pray then love him and then obey him that is how for him it was so intimacy had its effects uh how does it manifest um in our life it, it how will this manifest it's a growing relationship that reaches heaven that means as the years go by our connection with god becomes deeper and deeper and deeper as the years go by and we are able to better hear him better know him you know one of the tragedies i see in churches nowadays in many places is i don't say everywhere is that the older people as they grow older they they lose uh, focus and connect with god they get distracted with all other things in fact their relationship with god should be growing in an average uh, year we have 53 weeks and at least we might be going to church 50 weeks and we must be hearing 50 messages other than all the messages now that we hear on youtube or wherever else and all put together must must get you to a place where you can fly but what happens is that instead of a growing relationship and when you sit with old people nowadays and and i'm so disappointed as you sit and talk with them they have really nothing to tell of of god they have so many things to tell about investment this that children went here there and all but they don't have nothing they really know nothing to say anything from their journey with god so it's not a growing relationship that reaches heaven they are very sadly poor in this area very poor in this area they may have things to talk about cholesterol pressure are pressure and cholesterol will come one day you will die because of it that we all know it's a foregone conclusion only but what is it that we know about god that's what i'm trying to say intimacy manifestation and i think that those who go to heaven are those who are intimate with god here 
So whatever else you may call it, I lifted my hand in a meeting or whatever else. I give full marks to that. But at the end of the day, how can you, you and I be in heaven with a God whom with whom I'm not intimate on the earth, whose thoughts I never knew here, especially when Jesus prayed like that about us. So intimacy is a genuine thing, which is the, uh, in my opinion, the the bench, the 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 bedrock of uh, a great prayer life. So when you talk with God, now you imagine if you are intimate with God and if you are talking with God, what will happen? He will remind us of His love, and that itself will be so amazing. He will talk to us about the details of our lives, its calling, its various nuances. He'll talk a lot of things about those things. I'm very sure. You will not have a quiet time, and it, which will not be a marching orders. You will have quiet times and you will have marching orders. So details of our purposes of our life will be will be given to us. He will tell us where we failed and why. And the people to whom we have to say sorry or not sorry or whatever else. He'll talk about all those areas of our failures. He'll explain things we don't understand. There are a lot of things we don't understand. If you're intimate with God, that's something that's going to happen to us. He will talk about the future and how future, of, not only our future, but about the church, about the people of God, what's happening around us, near us. And he will talk about preparing us and we becoming the people who will shed tears about the future of the world and about every everything around us. And we will share mutual burdens and we will tell him all our sorrows and he will pour out into our hearts as much we can hold the concerns of God. And that will be something that will happen. So if you have an intimate talk with God, you can never, it is impossible in my opinion, for people not to have a robust prayer life just because of this one thing, intimacy with God. And um, uh, if you are not having a, a kind of a prayer life in the middle of, and I, I'm also a very, very busy person, I would say, but in the middle of it, we, we fight for minutes and hours sometimes, uh, seconds sometimes, I would say, and at that, that moment of time, but still, uh, when we go to God, we would like to find some unhurried time with him. The second thing, I hope you got that. The second thing I would say, first one was intimacy uh, with God. The second thing is praying because we have spiritual goals. So that intimacy will always lead us to spiritual goals. And now I put the, picture of a rocket being launched from here. See, the problem with most of us, I think with the spiritual goals aspect is why, why it doesn't lead to prayer is I sometimes say jokingly like this. If you, all you need is to throw a stone into your neighbor's compound. I think you can do it yourself with your own strength. You and I don't need anybody's help to throw a stone into my neighbor's compound. But if you want to throw that rocket onto the moon, then definitely you will need a help of a lot of people. And so you will have to go and find maybe if it's a NASA rocket, they will have to find engineers, brilliant ones that too. And they'll have to all come together. And especially they will need external help. So the reason I think sometimes where we may not need to pray for our spiritual goals is because they're too small and they are just locally made by us. And we know it fits our small plans. And so it won't disturb us. So they have naturally, those will not disturb anybody else. And so we, we will not need to pray because our spiritual goals are well confined within our abilities. But then when spiritual goals are bigger uh, and larger, then and one of the reasons why I find Christian organizations uh, don't work with one another is because they have the funds, they have everything going on, they have their things and all, and their goals are also very small. They are not planning anything big because too big means it will disturb them. They will have to go different places, disturb comforts. So they'll make small goals and then small prayers because that, that is good enough. And they will find ways and means of comforting themselves saying that this is my arena when God never said anything like that. Uh, if somebody had thought like that, you and I will not have been reading the Bible today because nobody here knew anything at, at, at that time. People had to come leaving their comfort zones here because they had good intimate walk with God and they had spiritual goals, which you and I don't have. Uh, I'm broadcasting you from Velour and the city is known for one lady who spent many years in this place. Uh, not so easy a terrain here, but many people have been blessed as a result of that because they have spiritual goals which are way bigger than them. So just from my house, if I can see, I can see something called Prayer Mountain. And that I'm told that's a place, one of the places where she used to come and pray. So our godly goals have impacts. Now, today morning also, we have now in our organization something called Raise the Benchmark. So in the on Saturdays, we hear about some great lives. I'm not going to get into whose life it was, but I will tell you some principle that was very important. Every day is one less one day less to complete what God has asked us to do. I think that must be something that we should think about. Every day is one day less to complete what God has asked us to do. And this is something that we learned today morning. Use everything that God has given you for creating the greatest transformational impact. So that is what our lives are for. So everything that God has given me, we will talk about it for making the greatest trans transformational impact. How can one's life bring such an impact? Uh, this is clubbed in by a medical doctor. He says, transformational impact is equal to total population of a place divided by the number of people like you in that place. That means you can create a transformational impact in a population if the number of people like you in that place are more. 
so where do we so we have to ask the question where do we need transformation and then our goal should be set into those areas and if more people like you are there you can create transformation in that area so you need to check so it's not as if god is going to show you all those kind of things god can show god may show but almost most of us will not have that uh, thing of jesus appearing in our room a light was shown and he told you go to this place that place that may never happen so you will have to look for something like this and that will become your prayer subject from then on which you have chosen as your transformational impact and on which the lord put his attestation through prayer this will make us to once we identify that will lead us to agonizing over the problem and that's what nehemiah was doing learning learning from nehemiah that's what we see he agonized over that that which god was asking him to do for which we need counsel we need advice from god and so we will go back to him in prayer so definitely godly goals will make us to pray and from the parable of the talents we find that we have this desire to maximize effectiveness through the holy spirit and and we want to say lord how much more can i do i'm working with young people for example uh, my desire is to see how i can do more now i'm 56 years old uh, i still keep going to camps of young people praise god god has given still some possibility to do that um, I, i'm on different meetings with them camps even today but i'm today looking at getting other young people to speak in my place so in which way can we be more effective is something that Uh, something that we need to look at okay so if if i look at uh, that part of it i would say godly goals create um, uh, will make you to pray because they will be way beyond your ability when god called came and told moses that he has to lead all these people though he was a great general i think his mouth must have opened like a goldfish because he he was stunned and we can see his struggles in the early chapters of exodus where he says how can i how can i because he's struggling with it and the only thing that you and i will be led to at that point of time is to seek the face of god and say lord this is way beyond me i can never do this why are you ask me to do this and then you work you know i may much to share on this but i'll stop here on that third thing why we will make us pray is understanding what our resource can do this is an exciting part of the whole thing i would say uh, seeking resources because we have some resources we want to put it onto the table with god and uh, our desire is that with whatever resource we have um to bring god glory uh, bring god glory that's all and uh, because we know that there is a promise ask of me and i will i not open the windows of heaven and pour out so there is we can ask uh, on god's resource and god will give um, uh, and for all these things which he gives us we are going to put it back to bring god glory and we can pray for laborers for work and god will provide laborers for the work and that is something else that he has promised that ask of me and i will give you people to work and um, to keep the enemies at bay i mean satan is fri- afraid of nothing uh, other than uh, he is only afraid of one thing and that one thing that he is afraid of is the lord jesus christ and so um, if you want to keep your enemies at bay the only way is to go back to god you can't frighten him with making a big noise none of those kind of things you can only do it through prayer and so you will pray definitely because you will have many enemies when you the until you do the will of god you will have very few enemies but when you do the will of god you will have many enemies many difficulties mostly and so um to keep all of that at bay you will need to pray that's very important <clears throat> uh, but unfortunately um uh, what people do is this so and the lord knew that we will be running after our own thing so he said this in the book of matthew 6 so do not worry saying what shall i eat what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after these things your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and these things will be given to you as well therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself each day has enough trouble of its own so instead of worrying about how will we live and those things taking precedence on us and if you read the parable of the weeds you will find that the third one which was crushed bit among the thorns it was not that the soil was bad the soil was good and it was germinating also but as we allowed all the cares of this world to come in it crushed the possibility of doing anything so um, our resource crunches are not really our problem actually our resource crunches are when we come to god and god does with what we have that is where great things happen in our life okay so um uh, god, and god has promised a lot of these resources for us in case we are serious about his work so if he says you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness don't worry about these chota chota things i will take care of the rest of the thing is what god tells us okay so sometimes we also don't understand uh, what resource we have and what we can do you know sometimes a little bit we have as as amazing power um, uh, to do many stories of that i can tell you from my life but um, when you read the feeding of the 5000 the miracle i i understood recently when i was studying it there was a miracle principle here what is the miracle principle here a small boy who was of course sought out by one of the disciples he gives what he has very little for the use of the whole multitude he brings and he brings that little bit to jesus 
and what jesus needs is when you bring like that to jesus that's something that he has brought has a need among the public the people have a need for that so some of the things that you can offer definitely has some things that you have definitely there is a need of that something in somebody's hand so if you bring even though it doesn't meet the need of everybody you bring that little bit to the table and you bring it to jesus jesus will take that little bit that you have brought and if there are people to distribute if without the distribution it will not work if there are people to take what jesus gives and to distribute then you will find that a miracle will happen so simple thing i have something that somebody has need of i take that very little which i know cannot be much but take it to jesus i know it won't be help 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 much to jesus jesus will take it provided there are people to i'm not saying it is a condition but if there are people to take it off take it to others which would which would definitely be part of the miracle they would go and give it to the crowd because they are the ones jesus is going to hand over whatever is multiplied so if you and i have something little um uh, and you take that little bit prayerfully to god you will see that some amazing miracle is going to happen and some of us we have by that standards so much so much really so much Uh, it your condition and my condition is not the condition of the boy with the l- few bread and fishes we have much more than that but unfortunately it is of no use to anybody so we also know that prayer is the only way to get what we need because when god is doing something prayer is the only way to to, to get what we need so uh, there are some amazing needs in ministry sometimes and in, or serving others or helping people we can't do it how much can we do we do very little uh, especially in the area of human resources and stuff like that but god knows and he, he when we go to him we know that prayer is the only way to get it and knowing that god can provide all these things is is such a um uh, knowledge that will make us to pray so we will go back to god and say god i have this amazing plan this i think will feed a lot of people this will really help a lot of people i am daringly going into it i am giving this thing into your hands do something about it at that moment you will look like a i don't know people may call you all kinds of names but soon you will find that jesus takes it and makes it a blessing to so many people you know that's something wonderful now uh, just now samuel was talking about him coming and working in a in our organization uh, for a for a few uh, few days uh, i remember when this organization itself started firstly i had so many problems with it myself to start because i have i am not having confidence and also i dilly dallied on it for a long time because i couldn't understand what god was trying to tell me for about 4 years praying seeking praying seeking but then afterwards or all these years god has made it a great blessing the fourth thing here um uh, quickly is uh, to know god's approach to prayers how does god look at our prayers if you know that maybe it will motivate you to pray it, it sure does me you know how god thinks and acts take the case of the roman centurion you know his belief in the power of jesus that was so amazing that god had to really uh, appreciate him and jesus had to appreciate him and he said wow that i mean when he said that you know i have people under me and uh, he was like almost ready to take that kind of thing so we find jesus in jesus somebody who says oh you have the faith then i am going to uh, work along with you that kind of person jesus is we find the canaanite woman you know um, where he where she comes to jesus and says lord my daughter is having a problem and just she identifies herself with the problem together and when she came with the problem as if it was her own problem uh, to jesus jesus was willing to do an amazing thing for her of course helping her to check out and to show others how how great a woman she was actually he, she did an amazing thing for her the persistent knocker i mean who came and knocked uh, to his friend's house till uh, he had the audacity to uh, keep on knocking like that and the man is sleeping and he is not getting up he knows his voice and he says i'm not getting up but but he keeps knocking he keeps asking and we see, and see what jesus is teaching through that you keep anyway how long this friend is going to sleep 6 hours 10 hours he will anyway get up he will give it. but but he is saying because there is somebody at home who has a need and 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 jesus is teaching these things so that we will pray and 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 when i know that that's that's my jesus then i want to pray look at lazarus i mean the sister sent just an sms the one you love is sick that's all nothing more a small sms the one you love is sick and here is jesus walking so far from far away and coming and doing the amazing miracle of raising the dead so when i see these things about my lord how will i not pray for the impossible things in front of me so i when i understand how god thinks and acts i will pray and i think there will be no other option for me other than to pray look at feeding the 4000 you know he shows how he is a god of the impossible i mean jews can understand that if some miracle is done among the jewish population but will this man do a miracle in 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 a place like that uh, where he has gone among people who are non jews would he do that and god did an amazing miracle among them and 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 fantastic things happened as a result of it this is how my god is he loves everybody he will do it for anybody when i know that so those kind of things as i read from scripture and sit and study along with others 
it then immediately leads me to those kind of actions and those kind of talking and i am not going to take no from god and those kind of things because god is willing to do those kind of things for others and that motivates me to pray and lastly lastly is understanding satan and his work how he works what is his realm his condition i know that i can't do much on this but i definitely want to catch a few thoughts on this area the prayer is the only answer to this unseen enemy see when your enemy is seen at least you know what to do with him but at least when the prayer is unseen when the enemy is unseen what can we do the bible clearly says our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against authorities please notice the word our struggle it is not saying our small problem no it's our struggle that means we are difficult i mean i've been through so many situations of like like that in this 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 last year itself i mean deep struggles um against authorities against powers of the dark world and spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms so prayer is the only answer do you know any other trick that you can handle an unseen enemy you cannot even see him and uh, he is in the spiritual realms and uh, he is the and our struggles are coming from him uh, it uh, he, there is no other option other than to pray and uh, if you want to know a little bit about how the devil thinks i picked up a few verses from the book of isaiah chapter 14 which will give you an indication of it actually talks about his end but from that you will know how he operated especially in times like these uh, in my opinion you you can look at it he talks about uh, a taunt against the king of babylon he says how the oppressor has come to an end how his fury has ended the lord has broken the rod of the wicked the scepter of the ruler uh, scepter of the rulers which in anger struck down people with unceasing blows and in fury subdued nations with relentless aggression whom is he talking about he's talking about somebody who is the oppressor the evil one who is who has who, who how does he work he works in fury he's angry he strikes people many of them don't even know he exists also and 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 maybe even thinking that they are he is his friend and with unceasing blows with relentless aggression that is how he operates he operates like that today friends so we need to know that prayer there's nothing that can handle somebody like this other than prayer and i think when you come to scenarios like that that's where you come to the mordekai kind of prayer where there is no option see if if mordekai will not pray the jews will be destroyed and there's no doubt about it and i i don't think the aggression level of the evil one is any less towards the church and towards church folk and those who uh, th- those who seek the face of god is as any less today than at any other time in the past um, he's as angry and as relentless and as furious as he can be and you and i better need to pray in a time like this not only for us but for the whole people of the world who might come under his attack and who who are under his uh, under his blows and more it says in verse 16 those who see you stare at you they ponder at your fate is this the man who shook the earth and made kingdoms tremble the man who made the world a wilderness who overthrew it who is making this world a wilderness who is overthrowing its cities who is making people captives there is only one person like that and the only answer to that one person is to pray so if you and i think that you can get you can, you and i can get away with you know this 3 minute prayer and 4 minute prayer and jesus i'll meet you later on in the evening if i have time then i will talk to you type of thing then i can tell you one thing you understood nothing about anything really absolutely you didn't get it at all you didn't get it at all you are faced with such severe challenges and the devil has got deception track record of thousands of years starting from our first grandmother onwards and uh, if you think that you can just team roll him with some small you know and today's spirituality is almost at a it's a very lukewarm level in many places and so with that you are going to do something i think we better wake up i would only say because the enemy you have this is how he behaves so when you work with uh, work on something on the opposite side then you need to have some some intensity in 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 what you're doing and that can only be brought through prayer and of course in the book of matthew chapter 8 verse 28 he talks about uh, 28 to 34 talks about uh, the demon possessed man at, at gatherings and there you find the, the demons how they think um, you know how demons work he talks about uh, they they know about a future torment they tell jesus i know that you know you are going to throw us into hell so they know about a future torment and it shows how they ro- hate to roam around without a body that these demons are all trying to possess somebody's bodies so that they can destroy their body once they get inside that's what's happening around us and and that's what the bible says and so uh, are you and i uh, ready to address those kind of problems most believers in my life i've i've seen have never ever seen even one demonic manifestation in their whole life they they don't even know he exists around them actually but yet there are many uh, around us maybe who are struggling with that and they have the ability to affect people's choices because when the people came they did not see the blessing that came to this man spiritually they were telling see our pigs are lost that is how 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 he makes us to think 
when the son of god comes to your shore and heals a man who is demon possessed you say leave us alone and we we are still mourning the death of our pigs that is how much he changes people so i don't know when people talk, talk about ministry and serving god and all they kind of relegate it to the last priority that is the last thing to do you know there are so many so called other great things to do i think there is nothing other greater thing to do than this amazing cosmic conflict that is going on and um, if you have understood anything at all in life you must know that there is something like this happening so i must pray that's something very important okay if you know so much i think i would say a prayerless life is a completely foolish life it's absolutely foolish life uh, you are living really you you better take five days leave and go and pray i would say that's very important um if you look at the example of daniel i think none of us can say i was very busy i think he was also very busy but uh, amazing his uh, the the kind of schedules that he had when he when he was trying to uh, pray you know and uh, satan can never possess a praying man because he is in constant communion with god and uh, satan hates a praying man uh, he can never come and oh, ho hold him or uh, tie him down it's impossible because he is a praying man he is seeking god's face he is talking to god no demon ever comes th that side and uh, it's time that we have some bigger goals in prayer uh, today our goals are very small and and you will always set bigger and bigger goals because um you you will go to god and say lord why not this why not that i have many stories to talk about on on, on that aspect but i i'm just telling you for uh, this thing that if you put up a bigger goal i'll tell you god will match you step to step on that and he will he will work along with you on that um i think we have got to a uh, habit of prayer uh, we are not used to praying much sometimes you know when people pray you immediately know whether they have a habit of prayer because um i um you know the the kind of closeness that they they have with god's word and god's issues comes out when they pray you know uh, so the habit of prayer are we used to praying uh, long you know um, the other day um, uh, one of the very older videos of uh, not videos one of the very older um, interviews of a man called dgs dinagaran who used to be i, I remember i remember hearing him when i was a youngster uh, um, and those early days when uh, the spiritual revival and all those things were going on in those days uh, something so in that one interview i heard him say something like this he said that there are times when you know sit and pray and it's 10 hours and throughout the night and you forget that the time has gone and things like that then one statement saying like that for after three or four days of fasting and prayer you get up and still wonder oh i i i did not pray for those three or four other requests how did i miss those other requests you imagine after three or four days of praying uh, so those kind of things so i used to think when as a youngster man you can pray like that is it not you can sit with god like that is it not and uh, uh, and we read of uh, people like praying hide and others in this country who came and prayed and so uh, i think uh, it's time i don't know when will we get time um, whenever i go to a cemetery i see it's very quiet there no mobile phones nobody calls you no children want to meet you no nobody's in laws are bothering them nothing is there only most of cemeteries i go i only see dogs roaming around small small here and there you that's all the scene you will see in an average cemetery everybody is very silent and do we all realize that it just takes few minutes for us to you know land up in a in a situation where we can be ready to go to a place like that and and we are so busy running i don't know what are we so busy about if you don't have time to think about such weighty matters as these things then what what is what is our life all about yeah that's what i i have a feel so um i've lived in bangalore for about 12 years because this church happens to be in bangalore i used to think that bangalore is a graveyard of most good believers and don't forgive me for saying it like this but i've seen a number of believers come to bangalore and lose their sheen i mean it will be all there i mean it will be like they'll be this and i never seen uh, any great decisions being taken in bangalore of people being very few i would say I, in my whole uh, 12 years in being in bangalore i've not seen that i've seen people come there and then get caught in the materialistic trip of that city in large ways but passionate uh, soul hot men and women of god in the city are rare to find um and they use spirituality to meet their own ends most of the time but this is nothing to do with that this is about catching the heart of god for the nation for the world uh, for and our lives in the process so are we ready for something like that is a question which you will have to ask yourself anyway sooner or later when eternity dawns on us suddenly <laughs> you know whenever i used to fly in an aircraft i used to suddenly think when we take off from the bangalore airport at least something is known of course that's not our home or anything like that but at least you know it's bangalore at least a few minutes once the flight goes up all you see is clouds and then there are no more familiar faces around nothing is there you look out of the window it's all clouds you know once god lifts us up from the, our familiar places there will be no familiar faces there then what will be familiar with us i think we should be familiar with the things that god calls us to be familiar with which will be relevant in that realm where we are going to go and so prayer is something that will connect us to that 
so i think um, if that be the case then it is good to take out your planner and uh, keep everybody out of it and say that this is my day of prayer as an organization we do it twice uh two times in a year now we select in the first year first six months and the second six months seven day periods where apart from the regular day daily and all seven day periods just shut ourselves down and spend time with god that's all we don't do anything other than that just quietness we gather for some time of worship and then go back sit with god because we want to catch a glimpse of glory bright and that's what we want to do i pray that the lord will help us in that and uh, maybe i will try to answer any of your questions as best as i know how but let me close in a word of prayer father i just try to put a lot of information into a few slides and to show to my brothers and sisters uh, i'm not aware of any one of them uh, except a few of them oh lord but i pray that let in their days to come in a place of spiritual battles like we have unseen and heard before where the enemy is angry like a roaring lion Uh, and i know that the lion roars when it is hungry um ready to devour people lord we as your people might be on one side seriously interceding and crying out and doing everything within our capacity physically to help people and father we ask you that you will give us that grace to be uh, people on our knees and people whose hands and feet are available for service in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you so much yeah i hope that was reasonably clear